Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another lesson. Today we're going to learn all about destructuring and how it will make your life so much easier in the JavaScript world. Now, destructuring works with two of the most popular object types, objects and arrays in JavaScript. And I'm going to show you a bunch of different examples as to how you can use it and why it's going to change your developer life for the better. Let's dive into some examples. So destructuring can be used with both arrays and objects. First, we're gonna cover objects. So assume we have an object right here. So this is a person where the first name and last name is simply Sunny Sanger. And typically the way that we would access these variables is we would say person dot first name, person dot last name, and then we can assign them to a variable and print them out like so, okay? Now, this was the old way in that we would see a lot of code written. You'd see this being used all around different code bases, but there's a better way to do this with ES6. So in this case, we can see we're actually gonna go ahead and use destructuring for the first time. So here we have the syntax for how to do object destructuring. Now, all we're doing is we're assigning a variable. So it could be a const, it could be a let. In this case, we're just gonna use let. And what we're doing is we're basically pulling apart the variable. So you see how we have first name and last name. What we're doing is we're taking it apart. So think of it easily as you have a personal object and you're just entering that object and taking out those variables so that you can use them as variables inside of your code. Okay, so in this case, you could see I've got first name, last name, and on the screen, that is actually gonna go ahead and show. So this is actually basically initializing those variables from this object, okay? So once we understand the syntax, it actually becomes fairly easy to go ahead and use. And we can also rename the variables while we're at it, okay? So how do we do this? Well, the same syntax applies. So in this case, we go ahead and we destructure the two variables out of the person variable. So the left-hand side is where we will be initializing our variables from the right-hand object. Okay. And here we can actually go ahead and use the colon syntax to actually give it a different name. So in this case, what we're doing is we're taking the first name out of the person object and we're renaming it to F name and we're taking the last name to L name. Okay, and now when we go ahead and print it out, you can see that we get Sunny and Sango. So this is a really nice way that you can go ahead and do it. Now, I'd highly recommend you get comfortable with this syntax because it will make your life a lot easier and it will make your code a lot cleaner. So what happens if you try to destructure a property that doesn't exist? So in this case, we've got the first name that I'm pulling away, the last name, and I'm not going to rename here. I'm just going to keep the original variable names. That's fine. But then I go ahead and try to destructure the middle name. Now, middle name isn't a value here, right? It's not inside our object. If we were to go ahead and console log it, you can see all that happens is it becomes undefined. So in this case, if I was to go ahead and do ABC, you can see that ABC will then be undefined as well. Okay, so it won't go ahead and completely freak out. Although a lot of code editors like VS Code will pick up on this and actually call you out on it. This is just worth knowing that you'll get an undefined object as a result of doing this. Next up, we have another example whereby I'm gonna explain how you can set default values for when you're destructuring objects. Now, what the hell does that mean? So in this case, we've got an object here, again, person with the first name, last name, and current age, and we're destructuring, except for the middle name and current age, we're using something called default values. Now, this is really powerful because what this basically says is if this variable does not exist, inside of the initial object then we're going to give it the default value assigned here so something to also not get caught out on is this syntax right here can also get a bit confusing it's current age but it's given an alias of age so we're renaming the variable from current age to age and then we're giving it a default value of 20 right but in this case we have already got a current age of 28 so which one would take precedent here, right? Which one would actually go ahead and take the uh, priority? Well, let's go ahead and test it out. Middle name in this case was not defined in our initial object. So therefore it will default to the value we've given here, which is a blank string, which makes sense. Perfect. Age will become 28. Now you're probably wondering, but hang on a minute, the default is 20. Well, no, if we look at the initial object, it was already there, a value was there. Therefore it does not need to default to the value that we've given here. So this means that it will use the value we have. And if this value was not there, then you'll see that it becomes 20 because now there's no value. So it will default to the value that we provided. 
Here's another little brief example of where we've done the middle name. So in this case, middle name we've given Sing, and you can see therefore it will not use the default value and instead it will print out Sing. And in this case, the age we've not provided, so therefore it defaults to 20. So fairly straightforward once we understand how to default when doing object destructuring. Now, I mentioned we can do destructuring with both objects and arrays. So let's dive into an example for an array. So previously, you would go ahead and define your array like this. And then if you wanted to go ahead and separate each of these values into their own variables, you would have to go ahead and do something ugly like this. You'd have to say let x equal array of index 0, let y equals array of index 1, and let z index equals index of 2. And then when you print them out, you get the following characters like you wanted. Now that works, sure, but there are a lot nicer ways since ES6 came along. Let's have a look at them. So in this case, this is the syntax for array destructuring. So as you can see, very similar to what we did previously, except for objects, we use curly brackets. For arrays, we're using square brackets, okay? So it's basically indicating that it's an object or it's an array. And in this case, what we're doing is we're defining a variable, so let... And in this case, we're saying, okay, we're going to do array destructuring X, Y, Z of array. Now, what this means is that it's going to go ahead and basically traverse through the array. And for the first value it finds, it's going to give it the value here. For the second value it finds, it's going to give the value here. For the third value it finds, it's going to give this value here. Right. So in this case, it's created three variables. This would be for index position uh, zero. This would be for index position one. And this would be for index position two. And if we log it out, you can see that we get a perfect one, two, three. Very similar to exactly, well, exactly the same as we had previously, but so much cleaner. Right. So this is a much nicer way that we can go ahead and actually create our variables out of our arrays. Now let's see this in a more clearer example. So the left hand side of the assignment is the array of variables that we're going to initialize. And the right hand side is the array of, ver of values that we're actually going to pass over to those variables. Okay. So the way that it essentially works is the first one is going to go ahead and get linked here. The second one is going to go ahead and get linked here. The third one is going to get passed the value like so, and the fourth to finish things off. And then if you had more, it would just carry on doing the same principle. So fairly straightforward to understand, but this hopefully should allow you to visualize what is happening when we use array destructuring to go ahead and initialize our variables. It's overall a lot cleaner in my opinion, once you understand how to use it. Now, what happens if we want to skip an item when we're destructuring through an array? So let's take an example here where we've got an array of three different values, right? The strings one, two, and three. But let's say I want this value and I want this value, but I don't care about this one. Well, in the previous example, you would have wondered how do we skip that second value? Well, if you ever need to skip it, all you simply need to do is add a comma as if you were going to your second variable, but then simply add another one and have nothing in between. So this is basically a blank space here and you're essentially just telling JavaScript that you want to skip that. And in this case, for example, X is being given to one. Um, y is not here, so that's why we no longer have it. So in this case, I'm just leaving it blank, which means skip this one. And then for the third one, Z, we're giving it the third value, okay? Now, if I was to go ahead and skip one more time, you will see that we now have one and then undefined because what we're essentially done is we've given this one a, var a variable, then we've skipped twice. So we have skipped, we've skipped, and then I'm undefined. In which case, Z is now undefined. So you have to be careful, but we also have the same response that we had previously with uh, objects. So if you do try to destructure something that isn't there, you're simply gonna get undefined as opposed to everything crashing and burning, okay? Now, the next cool thing that you can do with destructuring is combining it with the spread operator. Now, I'll tell you how this works in a short and simple example. Here, we've got a bunch of names inside of an array. And what we can do is, let's imagine I want to pull out Sunny, but then I want the rest of them to be stored inside of an array. Well, the way that we can do this is we can use the destructuring syntax, but we can use the rest statement. So in this case, we're using the spread operator here to basically say, I want the first element like we expected it. But then what I'm doing is I'm spreading out the rest of the remaining elements into Y. Okay, so if you actually think about it, spreading the remaining elements, that's the spread operator, spreading the remaining elements into the variable Y. 
Okay, so let's really dive into this and think about what it's doing. And again, remember, we're following the same syntax. So if we look at X, you can see we've got sunny, which is perfect. And then if we look at Y, we now have an array of all of the remaining variables. So if I was to now go ahead and change this to, for example, X and A, and then do a comma, you'll now see that we have X being sunny. A would now be J. So if I was to go ahead and say console.log, uh, a you'll now see that that is j and then in y we spread the remaining elements which is now brian and rogers okay so very simple to understand but this is extremely powerful so it's worth mentioning that this trick also works in object destructuring as well so here we have a person object name age and gender and in this case i just want the name of the person to be stored in a variable and then the rest of the elements can be just kept inside of this rest variable and again you can name this whatever you want it really doesn't make a difference here as long as you've got the spread syntax in front of it it's basically saying spread the remaining elements into this variable and we're destructuring from the person object so in this case if i log out name you can see the name comes out just like we expect and then in the rest of the elements you can now see we have an object of those elements being left over okay so you can see it works regardless if you're doing array destructuring or if you're doing object destructuring you can use that trick for both really really powerful trick to know about now be careful when you do this because the spread syntax has to be the last variable okay so if you want to do this the trick has to basically be that you have it at the end of the uh, destructuring sequence so in this case you have to have all your variables singly listed out and then the rest of them can be only used as the last element being destructured okay you can't have it the other way in which case if you try to do this it will throw an error saying the rest element must be the last element and that's exactly the syntax error that you're going to get so if you ever run into this error message rest element must be last element that is exactly what it's trying to tell you it's trying to tell you that the rest element has to be the last element on the page right so hopefully that makes sense so let's talk about some cool tricks that you can do with destructuring and this has actually come up in an interview question in a few different cases so in this case we've got two variables name one and name two so sunny and jay simply put now if an interviewer said to you show me how to swap these variables in one line of code this is actually where you could use array destructuring to do so so what we're actually doing here is our left hand side is where we're assigning the variables okay and the right hand side is where we have the values to be assigned so now what I'm doing is I'm passing name one and name two respectively. And, and then what I'm saying is assign the values of the opposite. So what we're essentially doing here is swapping and basically saying name one becomes name two, name two becomes name one. And if we log them out, now you'll see that name one is J, name two is Sunny, which means that we've actually successfully swapped over our variables. So a nice little cool trick if you didn't know how to do it. Now, when we're doing destructuring, we can literally go ahead and destructure from an object or anything else which returns something like an object or an array. So in this case, a function, for example. So here we have a function. And in this case, if this was to return a person object, we could go ahead and simply destructure like this and it would be all OK. However, in some situations, this may return no. So in this instance, it returns no. That's going to cause a massive error to come on the screen and it's going to shower us. OK, how do we fix this? How do we go ahead and prevent everything from crashing and burning when this happens? Well, what we can do is we can simply go ahead and do the destructuring syntax like we expect. But we can actually use the or operator, which is these two lines to go ahead and say, try this. But if this is falsy, which means that if this was no or it's undefined, then fall back to using an empty object. OK, and in this case, what it's doing is it's, it's trying to destructure these elements out of an empty object. And remember the rule, if it doesn't exist in the object, they're simply going to be undefined, which is why we see undefined here. So this is a safeguard that you can use if you're not 100% sure if your function or whatever you're destructuring from will return an expected value. Next up, we have nested object destructuring. So this one is really one of those things I recommend you practice a few times over. Once you absolutely nail it, I promise you it will save you a ton of headache and hassle. But it can be extremely kind of confusing in the beginning. So I understand your pain. 
So let's go ahead and look at an example. Here we've got a nested object where we've got a member and they've got an ID and they've got a name which is in itself an object, okay? So in here you've got a nested object with first name and last name. Now how do we destructure that and get the variables out of it, right? So what do we write? Well, here's how we do it. So in this case, you can see a very similar syntax, okay? And the way you can think that you can think of this is imagine we have a blank canvas like so. In this case, I have the top level. I have ID and name. So this is the highest level inside of our object. So here I can either say ID or I can say name, okay? Now, what if I wanna go into the first name and last name? In this case, what I can do is I can go ahead and do colon and I can do a further destructuring. So now what I'm doing is, is I'm essentially accessing the nested object. So here you can see what I can then do is type in first name and last name. Okay, and we can do this in a different order. So I could actually go ahead and pop this over here and separate it like so, and it would still work. It doesn't make a difference, but this is how you go ahead and access the inner properties. Now it's worth mentioning that what we've done here is we've essentially gone ahead and created three variables. And you're probably wondering, well, aren't we, haven't we created four? Because in this case, we've got one, two, three, four. Well, actually, when we, you do this rule and you do a nested sort of access, right? What you're doing is you're not actually declaring the name variable itself as a variable. What you're doing is this is a variable, then you're going into it and you're act you're declaring these two as variables. So in this case, we've only got three. If I was to try and console log the name itself, you'll see that we get a blank, right? So you won't get the object that you're expecting. And the way that you can fix this is shown in the next example. So. This is how you go ahead and fix it. Same example at the top. And imagine if we want to go ahead and destructure it. So this is shown in a different way. Imagine you had a prettier running or something like that. Well, in this case, I'm going to show you from scratch to make it extremely clear. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and destructure the ID. We're going to get the name. And then I want to access the first name and last name. So I'm going to go ahead and say first name, last name. And then I also want the name object because in this case, See, I'm not getting the full object. I should be getting the full object back as well. Well, the way you can do it is you simply go ahead and just treat it like any other destructuring property. We've accessed nested values. And here what I'm going to do is simply access the parent property once again. And then you free up that variable in the way that you would expect. So if you ever want to get access to a nested variable, that's how you do it. But if you also want the parent object to come and be a part of it, then you have to declare it separately and that will make it behave the way that you expect it to. Now, moving over to our final example, and this is probably where you're going to see destructuring being used the most, especially when you're doing a functional components inside of React, when you're manipulating the props. But basically, we're talking about destructuring function arguments. So suppose we have the following example. In this case, we have an arrow function here, right? So whether this is a normal function or an arrow function, it simply accepts an argument and then we're outputting or returning this string. So here we have string interpolation. So all we're doing is we're returning some string based on the interpolation of these values. So in this case, we've got person dot first name, person dot last name. So this is an old school approach, right? And you're going to see this in a lot of your React code bases where you go into a code base. And this was the way that traditionally things would happen, especially when you see props and the way you would access props. Okay. But in this case, we've got the object here. And if we were to run this, what you'll see is that we go display full name, we pass in the entire person object. And then from there, they access the inner arguments. That's okay, right? It does work, but there is a better way to do it since the arrival of ES6. We can actually go ahead and destructure at this level. And I'm going to show you exactly how we can do that. So as you can see, what we can do is at the point where we accept the arguments, we can destructure this. So what we're saying is where we had person previously, we can now destructure and get the first name and the last name. Right. It can be a little bit tricky to get used to this by basically registering that you're seeing a destructuring call inside of the, the parentheses. But once you do, it makes it extremely clean because now I didn't have to say person dot first name, person dot last name. And notice how everything else remains exactly the same. So let's do a direct comparison of the two. At the top, we have the old school approach. Let display full name person. And then we've got person dot first name, person dot last name. And then we've got the nicer ES6 approach where we destructure the first name and last name out of it. And then the final return block is actually a lot clearer. 
It's just first name combined with last name. And this may not be apparent or clear enough to demonstrate it right here, but trust me when I say when you have larger React components and you're using the variables in tons of different places in your overall return, that's going to make a huge difference, okay? So the ES6 approach is the cleaner approach once you practice it several times. So taking things away, what have we learned in this lesson? We've learned that you can use destructuring with both objects and arrays. We've gone through tons of different examples and we've learned about all the different syntaxes and ways in which you can use it. Whether you're swapping variables, whether you're assigning default values, or whether you're just making your code more concise and clear, this is something you definitely want to add to your JavaScript toolkit. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and as always guys, I will see you in the next one. Peace.